My name is Nahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hey, um, I am Kay, your lifestyle is I am a secure woman mentor. I'm a life coach. Um, I help women transform their trauma, master their emotions, and manifest their dreams. And I am in Texas. So it's about four Which part of Texas? Afternoon. Dallas, Houston? I am in Dallas. Dallas, Dallas is cool. Yeah. Lo I have a lot of friends from over there. So listen, I got a question for you. Okay. What does the word, let's get, I, I like to get vocabularies out of the way all the, all the time. What does the word desire, what does it mean? What does it mean that I desire this in my life or desire specific things? What does that vocabulary, we, we got to kind of dissect it a little bit. What is okay. your definition of it? When you, when it's something that you desire, it's a need for it. It's something that you feel like if I have this, this will either elevate my life, change some part of my life. I have an innate desire. It's almost like a, it's not even a want. It's almost like a, an excessive need for something. Like if I don't accomplish this, what I desire in life, then I'm missing part of who I am. So when you have a, a des desire, I think you go after, after it harder than if it was something that you just wanted. When there's a desire, there's something within you that just won't let go of it. So. Okay, awesome. So here's my other question for you. How much things, how much materialistic things can I desire? Is it better if my goal is attached to something that doesn't have to do with physical or materialistic thing? Or can it be materialistic things? Your desire is your own. If, if it's something materialistic, then it's something materialistic. I think we put a... What can I say? We put a a limitation on ourselves, right? When it comes to certain things. And we don't want to, a lot of times because of the outside world, because of our people outside of us, we don't want to seem greedy. We don't want to seem a certain way. So we look at material, material things as something that's just surface level. And in reality, whatever you desire, even if it's, even if it's love, some people say, well, you can't have too much of something. And in reality, if, if, it's, if I need it and I, I desire it enough, it's not too much if I have it. And if I'm utilizing it for my highest and greatest good, then who are you to tell me that is too much? So I'm not here to tell someone, oh, you're desiring too many, too many material things. Well, if that's making them better in a sense, <laughs> then by all means, do for yourself what makes you happy. And if that's having material things, but, and you can manifest that and put into your into your space, then I, I'm not a person to tell you that, oh, you can't have that or you're, you have too much. What about everybody else? Because there's always enough to go around. So, so based on you helping a lot of different individuals achieve those desires, what do you think are common challenges that stops from people to achieve those desires? Your, um, first of all, is the fact that a lot of people don't want to hear what other people have to say. Just like, oh, you're, you're, you're uh, manifesting too much material things or what about this? What about that? I think a lot of outside voices keep people from really getting what they desire because they don't want to look a certain way to other people around them. When in, if you let go of the outside voices, if you let go of, what you feel like other people believe you should have, then it's limitless. But we place limitations because we don't want to look a certain way to other people. But we're not living this life for other people. We're living this life with other people, but not for other people. And I think people misunderstand un understand that. So you can have anything that you desire. Everything, like I said before, there's enough to go around for everyone. So just because you have what may seem like a lot, there's still, there's still enough to go around for others. So you're not taking from anyone else. You're just grabbing what's yours. I feel, I feel like a lot of people give a shit what other people think about they what they're doing. 
That's right. that's. I mean, to extend, it, I understand that in in our society, we should be mindful of the feedback and what they say, and sometimes we can figure out some improvements from that. But to to what extent is that really holding people back? Because if I mean personal experience, if I stop giving shit about what other people, I think I could get to where I want to go much faster. You right. know, even even at that level, I'm still saying okay. What if this person thinks like that? What if I offend this person? What if I do this? So a lot of times we have this kind of duality going on back and forth where I'm second doubting what I need to do to get where I want to go because I give a shit what other people think. You right. know, not in a bad way. I'm talking about in a good right. way because the deep inside, I know what I'm doing is good and is helping people. So I'm right. I'm functioning from that state. I don't know. I love to hear your feedback. Um, you know what? It, it it is. We do care what a lot of people think, and I'm just gonna speak from my ex personal experience. I feel I, growing up, I felt like there was a limitation. Like, okay, I can only have what other people have around me. I can only do what other people do around me. So in that retro, in that perspective, it's like, why am I limiting myself by by the way other people think? I have my own mind. I have my own life. I have my own desires. Why am I limiting myself? So as you elevate, there will be other people around that might feel, might be on your, your level of elevation, but then they still have their um, reasons for not having this or not having that. And those are conversations you have only to understand, but not for you to take on their limiting beliefs. Your beliefs are your own. And I think what people mess up on or misunderstand is that just because a person believes something to be true, it's only true for themselves. You have the right to believe what's true for you. So no matter what level you get to, what matters is your belief for yourself. What matters is your belief for your, even for your team. If you're teaching someone, hey, what is it that you believe? What is it that you believe you deserve or desire? And some people can't even comprehend that because they are ready for someone to say something so they can piggyback off of it. It's almost like you're, you don't even know yourself because you haven't even done the work within yourself to know what you want and what you need and what you desire because you're waiting for someone to basically tell you. So once you get that mind frame of, I create this, I can create my belief system, I can create things that benefit me and I don't have to wait for someone to tell me, then you realize you're, li you're, um, you're unlimited. You're lim you know, you're unlimited to what it is that you can bring in to what you desire. So no matter what level you get to, you're always evaluating yourself. It's never a moment that you aren't, aren't aware of who you are. It's just the moment of you saying, okay, I'm at this level now. Let's, let's, let's re, um, reevaluate. Let's 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 see what we can do now. That's a little bit different. That brings me a little bit higher in my own space. So that makes sense. So do you do you specialize with female entrepreneurs? Is that what you do? You empower females, or do you work with men and women? I'm I work mainly with women. So mainly women. Okay, cool. So I see a lot of. Um, other coaches have mentioned to me that a lot of individuals, especially females, they suffer from uh, self-confidence. A lot of times they don't know their worth. So let's just assume somebody's in that state for whatever reason, their past, their history, the way they grow up, mindset, all that. We are where we are. How do we move out of that? How do we improve? On? What are a couple of steps that I could do to, mm -hmm. to elevate myself? Instead of me just looking at that and just, you know, saying, okay, this is the life that I was handed out. This, leave that alone. What can I improve on? What can I improve or on? Or how should I start improving? Right. So when you, when you realize that, okay, there's a lack within myself somewhere and I have to figure out what I need to do first is self-awareness. It's, it's awareness of the fact that, okay, I'm missing something and I need to find it. I need to know what this is and why I'm feeling this way. And see, a lot of times, a lot of times what happens is that when we get to that point, it's the, it's the point of doing the healing work because we can't go from unconfident to confident without doing some work in between. 
So it takes those steps. It takes that awareness. It takes that, okay, at what point, why do I feel like this? And then you have to go back into whatever space and time where you kind of, where that started to happen for you. So it's a healing process that you, that you have to go through in order to even get to touching and knocking the, on the door to confidence. So it's about being aware of it first because we can't do anything or improve on anything if we're not aware of it. So it's about being aware of it and then kind of taking some step, steps back within your space and saying, okay, this is kind of where that happened for me and, and, I need to, and I need to heal from that. And then you take that small little space and you begin to heal from it. And then that's when you can start to knock on the door to being a little bit more confident because now you realize, okay, this is triggering me to be lackadaisical, un, you know, un, unconfident in what I'm doing because I've never healed this part. And when I get to it, it's always a, a blockage. So you have to heal those aspects in order for you to kind of knock down those walls in order for you to see how great you can be, how confident you can be in whatever it is that you're deciding to um, be confident in. I got a question for you. Like, uh -huh. I feel like mom and dads are usually more lenient or easier on their daughters and they're much more harder on their sons really so i felt like i always feel like they should grow up with more love more self-confidence more this because you know at least where i grew up you know if you're a guy like you got to do your own stuff like you know, you're like, hey, man up, do your thing. Like, you know, you can handle it, move out, do this, build a family, all that. I feel like females, I don't know, maybe it could just be my perception or maybe it's just right. my bubble that I'm in. I feel like females should have more confidence because they were receiving more love and more attention from the parents because a lot of guys go do their own stuff, but females are not like that. So I don't know. That's like a little bit of a challenge for me to understand. Right. As females are growing up, what is it causing that they're having lack of self-confidence? Or it could be as guys, it's just that guys are better at hiding it. Maybe they don't cry with each other. They don't have the right. girl talk, maybe. <laughs> maybe that's why we don't know that there is a lot of it. Right, right. Is that what it is? And see, for me, and I think for most women that I even talk to, it's, it's, it's the opposite. We've been taught to be strong, be this, do this, do that, to do everything, to do so much, almost by ourselves. So it's almost like, I'm, I'm forced to be this person without any help, but then I don't feel confident enough to do it because even though I'm told to do all of these things, we're never taught to almost be feminine and be confident in your ability just to be a woman and to grow up to be, you know, certain things. It's, it's, it's different for, for, I think for, different cultures to be honest with you and I personally I grew up it was a little bit harder for me I have a brother and granted he he didn't grow up we grew up in the same house but we didn't really grow up the same way so here I am I'm like I'm ready to get out I'm ready to do this and do that but because I was so ready to do things as far as business and things like that I think the confidence part comes in for um marriage and things like that because some people look at you like well let a man take care of you and you're not this you're, you're only made to do this to cook in the kitchen and do that so that's a confidence uh that will break your confidence because it's like no i'm more than that like i'm more than that so when you're only taught that okay this is what women should be and if you try to be anything else you're not being a woman or you're not letting me, a man come in and oh, my mom cooks, home. takes care of the household, does her business, makes her own money. Right. She runs the show, man. She is, my dad's got but no control. Still, you know, we my mom is in thing. charge we for still sure. Need that. Right. <laughs> my mom is in charge for sure. Like if things are <laughs> happening, it's because of my mom. That's it. Flat out. That's right. it. But, right. but what I'm interested at is I like to codify it and find out at what point did my mom decide that she was not going to go the traditional way, just like you mentioned, and she mm -hmm. said, you know what, do or die, I'm going to have my own business, I'm going to do this, I can take care of a household and run a business, and I can be good at both. I want to know what the heck happened. What kind of a neural path did she create for herself 
that she believed she could do it despite that everybody else probably around her wasn't going to go that route. Right. She got tired. She realized that there's more to me than this. And, you know, when we talked about that desire earlier, there was a desire there that was bigger than, what, than where she was. And she could no longer ignore the desire. So it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. I don't care what anyone else thinks. Once again, we can't always listen to those outside voices that's telling us, no, you have to be this way because I don't have to be that way. You don't, you didn't create, I can do whatever I want to do and I can be whatever I want to be. But when we're, when, when we're being told no, you, that's when you come up against opposition and that's when it, it really can cripple your confidence. But when you have the desire within yourself and you say, no, I'm going to listen to myself. I'm going to listen to what's within myself. And I'm going to make sure that I uh, satisfy my desire the way that I know that I need to. And when you have that type of power, that type of will, then you accomplish those things despite what you hear outside of yourself. So your mom was listening to her desire and she didn't care any longer what anyone else thought. Definitely. And listen, I give a lot of respect to a lot of individuals, men and women, because a lot of them go through a lot of tough times. And they usually don't see those struggles out in the open. They go with, through those challenges because I can't be next to my mom for all every challenge that she went through. I was growing up having my own life, living in my own bubble, but she was she had to deal with what she had to deal with. But right. when, sir, when they they emerge on the other side of all those challenges and turbulences and difficult times, you kind of like, you sit there and you're like, you respect that. You're like, I know your path has been hard, but I give a lot of respect for making it to the end. I mean, that inspired, not motivate, that inspires a lot of other people to take the same path. And they're like, if she made it, I can make it. And that's my role model right there. So that's why I think like, Parenting is very, very important. Setting it those is. role models. And I'm not talking about parenting biological children. You could be a parent for your, you know, your 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 nephew, cousins. Right, right. You are a role model in a sense, you are a parent inside. So maybe you're not putting food in their mouth every day, but you are a role model. And that is right. the same thing as a parent because they're very close to you. They're learning everything. They are. It's food for thought that you're feeding them. Definitely. I mean, I mean, and I feel like someone who sees that they're being a role model and inspires other people will strive to do more. I think that right. feedback gives them more energy to do more. So when That's they get true. this whole entire motion going, I mm -hmm. think it's a cycle of just energy. It comes right. back and it just fuels you. So now you no longer care about the money, materialistic thing. You no right. longer care about those things. You know, those are important. You should have them. You can't have them, nothing. But then it's no longer about that. When you see these good charities, when you see these support systems, when you mm -hmm. see a good a bunch of females supporting each other, there's right. no, most of the time, there's no money involved. Most of right. the time, they're just helping each other because they want to. They they get exactly. a kick out of it. You know? They feel that sense of empowerment that empowerment, I hey, right. I help somebody else get to their goal, which exactly. in reality is like, it's like we accomplished it together. Exactly. That's true. So anyway, but 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 hey, listen, while you create that female empowerment group, I got to go pr create the men group so we could kind of mm -hmm. compete a little bit. I know we're <laughs> probably going to lose because you guys go crazy. I know you guys are like crazy. Like you go, uh, we, we actually need some rest. <laughs> <laughs> listen, we got to have double of men in there Versus the amount of females you have in your group, I think that will give, you know, a playing field. I think now we could compete on, on decent levels. So, because I know some powerful females, man, and I don't know how they do it. They just go, like, energize their bunny, man. Right. They just keep going. And, you know, going we have to be, especially done. in a world with such a world built on on a patriarchal scale, <laughs> we, have to, we have to go harder because, you know, for, for many of us, we ne you never, they probably never even thought that, oh, I could be this or be that. So when you have that opportunity, you have to show up and you have to show out every time because, hey, I'm proving to you and to myself mainly that I've always had it in me. But the fact that a person thought that I should not be in this space makes it even that more 
um, I have to be that more aggressive and not in a, in a negative way, but that more aggressive to show you that, yes, I do belong in this space and I'm going to dominate it to the best of my ability. Done. Bring it to the table. So listen, mm -hmm. how do people find you? Hey, I am here on Instagram, of course, your uh, lifestylist. And also um, I'm on Facebook and Twitter, but mainly I'm always on Instagram. I ha also have YouTube and all of that. But if you go to my Instagram page, there's a link there with everything that I offer, my classes, uh, my YouTube channel, my podcast. So everything is there. So you can catch me if you're not a full Instagram person or you know someone and they're not on Instagram, but I have information for them. You have I have my podcast. I have YouTube. So I'm everywhere. You just have to wave and say hey navigate find the information listen if they want it they'll be able to find it listen thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us hopefully we'll get to do more definitely stay yes. safe out there in texas all right i will thank you you bye got bye. it talk to you soon bye-bye